1778, Middleborough, Massachusetts. After 18 years of a miserable and impoverished childhood, sealed with the struggles that lie within indentured servitude, Deborah Sampson was finally free of debt. She worked as a weaver as the American Revolutionary War raged on. My dearest brother Robert, 
I've been a teacher and a weaver for two years now, but it does not satisfy the itch within my soul to do more. A war rages around me, and I am to remain stagnant due to the fact that I am a woman? This is my country, and your country. I see the way you would have behaved at this time, and I know you would not stand for the lack of justice I am facing. I wish to do more. Find my home on the battlefield and fight for our country. I know some may see through my plot, but this is something I must at least try. Not only for my country, but for you, dear brother. Although I shall not see you until I join you in heaven, I believe it would be best to inform you of my experience on this journey. You shall be my grandest confidant, and I shall never forget how good you were to me. Pray I do well in this experiment. Your sister, Deborah. Seventeen eighty one, somewhere in Massachusetts. Deborah dressed in men's clothing and tirelessly attempted to enter the war efforts, but was discovered. This is detailed in the diary of her neighbor, Corporal Abner Weston of the Massachusetts militia. There happened an uncommon affair at this time. For Deborah Sampson of this town, dressed herself in men's clothes and hired herself to Israel Wood to go into the three years' service. But being found out, returned the hire and paid the damages. My dearest brother, I shall not give up. They have rejected me from the military. The people of the town are stirring with talk of my indecency. For your sake and for my own, I will not lay down like a lowly dog obeying his master. Just watch, I will find a way to fight. This fire burns brighter every day, and I shall not allow this passion to be wasted. May 23rd, 1782. A Robert Shirtleff joined the Massachusetts Regiment, and he couldn't be happier. My dearest brother, I have done it. I, Deborah Sampson, will be fighting in the Continental Army under the 4th Massachusetts Regiment. We are set to start marching from Worcester I all the way to West, West Point, Point, New York, two days ago. I've been chosen to be captain of George Webb's Light Infantry, Captain Robert Shirtleff. How the name so easily rolls off the tongue. I must thank you. I knew using your name instead of anyone else's would lead to more useful and nearly impossible trials if anyone tried to realize my identity. Ah, the light infantry! As the name insinuates, we must travel light and are placed in many focused, I difficult upon and another dangerous, dangerous situations. situations. This is what is to be expected of a war for freedom, of course. My men and I were almost spotted as we were surveying our territory. I've been involved in the fight for a month and have not found the means to be disappointed yet. Those red coats don't see that we, we shall reign victorious. victorious today. I led a raid at the home of a Tory and we captured 15 men. What if this 
this was all a big mistake. I'm so young. What if they find out? I'm not who they want. Robert, we need you. Shirtlift, watch out. Someone help him! I assure you I'm all right. Ugh. Two shots. Ugh. Those red coats just can't aim, can they? Every day another question, another query, and I don't know where we're going. Every day a little painful hard. I'm learning that I must keep on going. I want to hold. Seventeen eighty-two flew past. Deborah withstood additional injuries, but never failed to rise to each challenge. Between battles and skirmishes, Deborah chased victory. Each time she fought, she considered her life a victory. Never losing faith in her country, her fellow soldiers, or her brother's name, which she wore so proudly. Within her chase for freedom, she found herself additionally plagued with thoughts of the future. Continuing her fight for her country, she was placed under General John Patterson and traveled to Philadelphia to fight. While in Philadelphia, during the summer of 1783, Deborah became ill. My dear brother, I'm not struggling in the fight for our country. I do, however, question the meaning of my life after we've won our freedom. I know that the future is far away at this point and I should only be focused on the current war, but I can't help but wonder what happens after all this. Home feels as though it's only a mere idea, not a proper place. Is it just love of freedom that makes home? Is it the people I surround myself with? I could hardly think it would be love. I do not even know what that would look like, nor do I believe I could find it. Perhaps worrying myself with such matters shall not do me any good. I have taken ill over the past week, and fear questioning my life shall only make it worse. <laughs> I am trying to use all of my energy to become well again, for they keep asking me to see a physician, but I keep refusing. The last thing I would want is for them to find out that I am a woman. This feeling has only been getting worse and I fear I may have a fever. Who am I to take this as a threat? I have withstood more than a measly cold in my time within the... <gasps> Where am I? What, what happened? Who are you? You're in my office. You fainted. I am Dr. Barnabas Binney. Now it's my turn to ask you a question. Who are you? My name is Captain Robert Shirtleff, Doctor. Robert, that's not common for a woman's name, is it? I find myself alone again in a dark place I never wanted to be. I have left so far, the secret has become so difficult to flee. For I am a person of strength and of bravery. I have learned to see I wasn't there to battle with myself. I was fighting to be free. I had nothing growing up, not a secret, not a thought to speak aloud. I had nothing of my own, not a blanket, not a reason to be proud. You see, the freedom of this country is the only breath of something that's been mine. 
and answers for your questions get lost in the spatter of blood and fighting over time. Dr. Barnabas, you must understand. Robert is all I have. A name under which to fight for my country. My entire childhood, I was an indentured servant. Growing up, I had nothing that belonged to me. I was nothing. This is the first time in my entire life that I can say I am a part of something because I can be, not because I must be. And yet the one thing that I want to fight for is not allowed due to the way I was born. Something that I cannot change. Because I am a woman, I cannot fight. I cannot even speak. For my words hold no weight when held against those of a man. You must understand this country means everything to me. It's the only thing I have. And the only way I can fight is through this name that I have borrowed. I had nothing growing up, not a secret, not a thought to speak aloud. I had nothing of my own, not a blanket, not a reason to be proud. You see, the freedom of this country is the only breath of something that's been mine. And answers for your questions get lost in the spatter of blood over time. You must keep me a secret. You must keep this a secret, Doctor. You must vow upon your soul to keep it. For this is all I have, Doctor. You see, the freedom of this country is the only breath of something that's been mine. And my loyalty to this country has never faltered throughout time. I shall. Now what is your name, miss? Deborah. Deborah Sampson. We've won. Dr. Barnabas Binney treated Deborah in confidence. Upon her return to health, he revealed her secret to General Patterson. Deborah was honorably discharged at West Point on October 25th, 1783. Deborah moved back to Massachusetts, where she fell in love and married Benjamin Gannett. They settled in Sharon. The couple had three children and adopted a fourth. In 1792, Deborah petitioned the state and fought for the military pay that had been kept from her due to her gender. She won. In March of 1802, Deborah became the first woman in America to go on a lecture tour. Traveling across Massachusetts, New York, and Rhode Island, she spoke of her experiences in the war. Later, in 1804, she fought for the military pension that had been withheld from her. Deborah went on to be the only female to receive a full military pension for fighting in the Revolutionary War. Alabaster cities gleam undimmed by human tears America America God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea from sea to shining sea Someone else every night in my dreams But her 
blame's not you cause I shouldn't rip at the seams And it isn't found in hardships It isn't found in words It isn't found in shaking hands or whispers I've ever heard Finding home's not easy As I've been shattered to see Maybe this place I'm looking for isn't tangible to me Epiphany Home couldn't be you Cause home was always me And it isn't found in hardships It isn't found in words It isn't found in shaking hands Or the idea of love I learned Finding home's not easy As I've been shattered to see Because this place I've been looking for Has been inside You've just listened to Boulder, the Deborah Sampson mini musical, written and produced by Ella Clayfish. The role of Deborah Sampson was played by Ella Clayfish. The role of Dr. Barnabas Binney was performed by Gabriel Hanna. Additional credit for sound effects Satorio, Sound Smack, and Pro Sound Effects Library on iTunes. Chips.